Welcome to Foxcroft Academy for tonight's action between the Foxcroft Academy ponies and the visiting Herman Hawks. My name is Zach White. I've got Mark Callen with me doing the commentary. Mark, exciting action we're going to have for you tonight. Yeah, the Foxcroft ponies are looking to, you know, kind of build something here as the 2023 um year gets underway um solid group they you know they're three and two they um coming off a loss to caribou a game you saw right here on the eastern main sports media last week and they're looking you know they got a big big game thursday this is a big game they got another one thursday one of the keys to the game is to not look ahead not look past this herman team as uh, they got a heel point world of game at dexter on thursday absolutely and thank you again for joining us on the main highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show. Mark, this Foxcroft Ponies team, a team we've seen a few times, fairly familiar with. We've had some of their action here. You can go back and check out some of those games on our YouTube channel at uh, Eastern Main Sports Media where you're watching this right now. If you haven't already, also please subscribe as we have a lot of content planned and coming up, including tonight's action tonight. But Mark, we're quickly starting to approach the mid-year point in terms of games played on the season. Um, just talking about this Foxcroft side a little bit, um, what are some of the things you've noticed as the year's kind of gone on? And Toby Nelson's always having his group prepared, but um, what's some of the things that you've noticed in terms of this Pony squad uh, leading up to where we are now? That Jaden Richard has stepped up his game big time. He was already, we already knew about his talent, but he is a, a talent that is one of the best point guys in the Big East. Absolutely is. And Herman Hawkside, I haven't had the opportunity to watch him this year. Know that they're a younger group coming into tonight's action. I uh, got the chance to talk to Coach Mark Reed a little bit before the game. And physicality is one of the dimensions. Uh, I think that was mentioned during that conversation. Uh, what are the Hawks going to have to do to match some of the physicality we expect to see out here on the pony side? Well, I mean, that's, that's easier. easier said than done. And Coach Reed knows that too. Um, but Owen Wyman for them, he averages 13 points a game and 10 rebounds. He's a sophomore, so so he, he definitely is a threat down you know down low for them and averaging a double double. So that's um, you know definitely someone to watch for them. Absolutely, and with that, we're going to take the opportunity to send this to a quick commercial break and rejoin you for the main Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show before tonight's action. Thank you for joining us. You're watching Maine High School basketball with East Maine Sports. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center is a practice that specializes in treating a variety of different conditions. We treat patients daily who suffer from chronic lower back and neck pain, headaches, repetitive stress disorders, work injuries, sports injuries, and more. Dr. Rick and our entire team at Ames Chiropractic are excited to welcome you to our brand new Bangor office located at 43 Longview Drive right behind Olive Garden. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center, helping you to naturally feel and be your very best. We're busy with places to go, things to do, people to see. Let Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union make managing your money easy with mobile services, bill pay, Apple pay, mobile deposit, and more. We're as close as your phone. Now serving all of Piscataquis, Penobscot, and Somerset counties. Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union. Personal service, shared value. MHFCU.com. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. And stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, 
online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Welcome back to Foxcroft Academy, and thank you for rejoining us on the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show as we prepare for tonight's action between the Foxcroft Academy ponies and the visiting Herman Hawks. Again, my name is Zach White, joined by Mark Allen. We're going to be doing the game for you this evening. I want to take the opportunity real quickly to thank some of the sponsors who have helped make this possible. Black Bear Crane. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman, covering the city of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast direction to modular home and communications equipment. Call 977-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing available. Great selection of new and used. Call 207-368-5751. And Main Mapping Company. Main Mapping Company provides all of your land surveying, geomatics, engineering, and mapping needs throughout the state of Maine. Centrally located in Dexter, Maine, Mapping provides boundary, topographic, and aerial surveys, as well as construction surveys statewide. Visit us at www.mainmappingco.com or check out our Facebook page to get more information or request a quote. With that, Mark, let's get back to a little bit of the action and talk about these two teams a little bit more in depth as we prepare for the action tonight. Let's take a look at the ponies. They're coming into this one, three and two, um, looking to definitely build on some early season momentum. They uh, lost a tough game against Caribou. We had that one for you here on East Main Sports. Also, another tough battle against our Orno Red Riot squad that's, I believe, on the main basketball rankings. It has them all the way up to sixth in the state in terms of their overall rankings. We'll talk about main basketball rankings again in a moment. But coming in at three and two, they're averaging 64.2 points a game and allowing only 47.6. So their, their score differential is good, but having a, just a being a game over 500, look for them to be hungry out here tonight. Yeah, certainly um, all true, uh, Zach. They, um, you know, they got to be hungry. They, as, I, as I mentioned, they, they need the heel points. They need the, their um, eighth and the latest um, heel point standards, which too early to look at. Really, it really is. But the, you look at their schedule, the heel point game's coming up, and one of them is Thursday. They, they need to get on track tonight. And I'm not saying they're off track. They played well against Caribou. Caribou's a very good team that came in and, and beat them. But they got to get on track and carry some momentum in, into the rest of the rest of the season. It's definitely going to be necessary. Now let's take a look at the Hawks, who have a big opportunity tonight to try to earn some heel points against a quality Foxcroft Academy team. Coming in at one and four. Now they've had some tough matchups along the way, but they're averaging right around 45 points a game and letting up 65. But again. Important to mention that they've run into Orono, another team that likes to score a ton of points. So those stats can get a little bit inflated. MDI, I believe it was, also a team that can score the basketball very well. So those stats can get a little bit inflated there. Look for them to continue trying to grow, though, Mark. We understand that they're a younger group, but they're going to play hungry. They're going to come out with intensity, and they're going to have to match the physicality, as we mentioned earlier. But what are some other things to be looking for from the Hawks? I think for them, just... Play your game. Don't worry. I mean, it's going to be tough. Um, we, as you said, we talked to Coach Mockery before the game, and he has three sophomores getting a lot of minutes. And they're playing. They're playing fairly well, but they're sophomores playing against playing against uh, juniors and seniors. Freshmen and sophomores playing against juniors and seniors. They just need to kind of play their game. Not worry. Not get down. If they if they get down early in the game, not to worry about it. Just um, keep playing the game and uh, see what happens. Yep. Basketball games are four quarters for a reason. That is for sure. Let's talk about a few of the key contributors before we take one more commercial break here, Mark. Real quickly, um, on the Hawk side, Owen Wyman and Bryce Edwards. They do a lot of the scoring. Um, Brody Hurd also does a lot of the scoring for the on the Hawk side there. And it, it can be a lot to ask a lot out of your players who are putting up a majority of the points. Wyman has 53 on the seat, 53 points on the season. So averaging right around 10 points a game. And Bryce Edwards has 47 points on the season. So about the same there, Mark. Um, when you get two players that can contribute like that on a nightly basis, 
that's a good thing. And it's definitely something that you can continue to grow on. And if you can start to get some other people involved, maybe a couple other guys start averaging somewhere around five points a game, the points add up pretty quickly there. Sure, they do. And they also got another, um, Maddox Kinney, um, another sophomore, is averaging around eight or nine rebounds a game, too. So, um, you know, he, he's done, you know, some good work on the boards for them. But you're right, just get some more contributors. And you look at the roster, and I mean, um, starting one junior, um, three sophomores and one freshman. You know, so this is a, a proud program, though. They're gonna, they're gonna be back. They're gonna be back, and you never know. They could be back tonight. You know, Absolutely. you know, and um, so that's one thing you gotta look at. One of the, one of the a strong program. We see them in Bangor. You know, traditionally, um, the program we always see. So, um, when it's expect to be down for long. Um, Good coach Mark Reed and uh, good coaching staff overall with um, his dad Roger, um, a longtime coach, um, one of the assistants, uh, Matt Murray, and um, they got a, they got a good coaching staff. Definitely, and tradition does not graduate, as they say. Um, we're going to take one more commercial break and rejoin you for the remainder of the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union game show. Stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Thank you for rejoining us here on the Main House for the Credit Union pregame show. 3.20 remaining on the clock before the action gets started tonight. We want to take the opportunity real quickly to show you some of the highlights from some of the recent games we've had here on Eastern Main Sports and East Main Sports. Media. There. Up. No good. Rebound by Page. He'll go up and in. Connor to Kimball to Kuzniers. Up and in. We're going to force that miss. Nice defense. Kuzniers underneath the Doherty. Nice pass there. Gets it to Kuzniers. Kuzniers. Baseline. Up. Good. That's a steal. Force so a turnover. Going. Yep. Here comes Kuzniers. He's going to go. He's going to dunk it. Goins done a nice job off the bench since coming in. He certainly has. Kuzniers right into the paint. Up and in. Often. Looking inside. Oh, nice pass. Beautiful pass. He's going to get it out to Spratt. That's a three. It's no good. Kuzniers not going to count. Ooh, Kuzniers, I think, almost wanted to shoot that. He looks inside instead, and there's a layup. Kuzniers with another rebound. He's going to look for Spratt. Spratt underneath the PB. PB fakes the shot. It's going to go over to Kuzniers. He's going to go baseline. Kuzniers up and in. Uh, top teams to see. Going out. Oh, beautiful so pass. Back. back to Kuzniers. Up. Connor. Nice. Doherty, number one in Class C. The Goins, underneath, up and good. Ashnellis came up with a steal, gets it over to Tim Smith. He's gonna go up. Corson takes the jumper, swish. Let's look at that again. Goes over to Page. He takes the jumper. That's good. Good job by Page. Cross court goes to Adams. Oh, Corson, deep three there. That one is good. Lot, lot to choose from. Corson for three is good. She hasn't cooled that. Adams there. Oh, whoa, she got bumped. Let's look at that again. Watched uh, Old Town Ellsworth boys and girls there last week. Oh, nice job by Peach up and in. Oh, Adams steps right in. She takes it right away. She, oh, nice move all the way to the basket. Up and in. Let's look in the hands of Corson. Here she comes looking to push. Oh, nice pass to Dean. Up and in. Let's look at it. Goes Corson the other way. All the way up and in. Let's look at that. Adams takes the shot. Up and good. Let's look at that. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, nice move there by Paige. Beautiful move there. That's a very good game in a preseason against Madison. He put up like 20 points. Oh, beautiful there by Adams. Take a look at Oh, beautiful pass. Up and good. Those replays and highlights are courtesy of Maiden Mapping Company. want to thank them for joining on as a sponsor here with Eastern Maine Sports. Um, also, you saw the Dexter girls in action on those highlights. Well, they were also in action tonight, and they improved to 7-0 with, I believe it was a 39-12 mark victory over Stearns. I believe so, yep. We were trying to catch a little bit of that game, and 
juggling some of the other things before this one, but I believe that one was 39-12. Either way, it was. Um, it was, in fact, 39-12. Either way, the Tigers, they advanced to 7-0. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, we're going to pass it over to Fox Rocks Academy as they give you the starting lineups for tonight's action, followed by the National Anthem, and then we'll have the action. Revive sportsmanship. Please cheer positively for all players of all, and we hope you enjoy the next game. Now, let's finish the starters. First, for the visiting Hawks. Sophomore, number 23, Grayson Harlone. Sophomore, number 24, Bryson Edwards. Senior, number 34, Brian White. Sophomore, number 40, Owen Wyman. And freshman, number 42, Brody Hurd. The Hawks are coached by Mark Reed and assisted by uh, Matt Murray, Matt Kenny, and Roger Reed. Let's go, Matt! And now, the starting line is for your Fox Roth Academy Podiums. And y'all are the 5'10 junior, number three, Jaden Richard. And the other guy, the six foot senior, number 23, Jaden Crocker. Now, play with the 5'10 senior, number 14, Cameron Chase. The other forward, the 6 2 senior, number 31, Adam Connor. And at center for the board is the 6 6 senior, number 44, Ivan Munichu. The board is approached by Toby Dawson, he's assisted by Ryan Dakin and Drew Dakin. The officials for today's game are Mr. Winchester and Mr. Speed. Now, we ask you to please all rise or remove your hats for the playing for national anthem of uh, Fox Jump Academy Band under the direction of Mr. Josh Guthrie. There you had it, the starting lineups, national anthem. As I always say, only thing left to do is tip off here, Mark Allen, as we prepare for tonight's action. Yeah, certainly. Looking forward to this. And uh, I think the, you know, you say this about any game, but the first three, four minutes of this game is big because, um, you know, Foscroft wants to put some, you know, doubt in their mind. If Herman can stay in it for the first quarter, you know, we might be in for a great ball game. Absolutely could be. And I believe there was one... Error in the starting lineups there. I believe uh, Edwards, I mean, uh, rather, Henderson wasn't announced for the Hawks. Um, originally, Madden Henderson, he is also starting tonight. Tip off, taken away, controlled by the Hawks. They're going to get the action started tonight. That's a little chance. Good defense off the dribble. Shot inside. Good. Up fake up and in for two. Nice move there by Wyman, their leading scorer. Gets the action started early in the scoring column. We have noticed a few times that ponies, they don't get off to fast starts. So this is an opportunity. If you're going to jump on this team, this is the time to do it. Easier said than done, though. Budachev, ball fake. Had a cutting corner, but good defense by the Hawks. Shot put up off the mark. Rebound taken away by Wyman. Great defense there in that first um, possession. And if Herman wants to keep this a half-court game, 
And that is one of the things we talked about earlier on with Coach Reed. You know, the Hawks, they like to operate this half-court offense. If they can slow the game down, take care of the ball being a key there, they'll get the game that they want to play. Good help defense over there. Good patience being showcased here by the Hawks. Shot from the corner, up and in for three. That's Wyman. What a start. We'll watch that again. Hawks. Shot from the corner, up and in. That was brought to you by Main Mapping Company. Thank you to them. Richard, he's trying to get the scoring started for the Ponies. We're going to have a push there. I believe they're going to call it before the shots. See who that one goes against. That's going to go against Edwards. First foul of the game. Wyman, own Wyman for the Hawks. Five points early on. Only scoring so far in the game. Crocker looking to change that. Three off the mark, battle for the rebound, taken down by Hurd. They, they want to pull it back. Get this half court game. Get the, get, ball, get the ball to Wyman like they have. Yeah, that's been working so far early on in this one. It's a pass back to Wyman. Foul line jumper up and in. Watching that again. Pass back to Wyman. Foul line jumper. The Owen Wyman shows that. Yeah, quick start for him. And I mentioned it a minute ago. But the Ponies, you know, a great team, but they've been known to start off slower. Hawks taking advantage of that right now. Richard taking advantage of the hesitation up and in. Slower. Hawks taking advantage of that right now. Richard taking. Great move there by Richard. He gets the scoring started for the Ponies. Pass over, first shot taken by someone not named Wyman. Off the mark, rebound by Chase. Crocker, pass ahead to Richard. All the way to the rim, a lot of contact, no call. Rebound, Connor. Connor off the mark. Hawks, they come away with it. So Adam Connor got an offensive rebound on that last opportunity, but ultimately it was Henderson coming away with it for the Hawks. Immediately slowing the game back down, running this half-court offense. Hurd kicks it out. Three-point attempt off the mark. Corralled by Jaden Richard. And they haven't got a chance yet because they haven't scored much, but they might want to pick up the pressure of the Ponies to get, uh, speed this game up. Absolutely. With the way that the Hawks are playing as Muduchev. Good rebound inside off the mark. That's Wyman who came away with the miss. The Hawks are content to yeah. play this slower half-court game. That's what I'm saying. If, you know, if they can, but also they got to make a few back to, to pick up the pressure, but they might want to do that when they get the opportunity. Easiest nice pass. Nice pass inside, up and in for two. Edwards with the basket. Good pass there by Henderson. Yep, Henderson to Edwards. Layup. Nine points early on here. 425 remaining early in this first quarter. Crocker hands it off to Richard. Richard has a lone two points for the Pony so far. Richard, another player that very good control of his speeds out on the court, but he's content to slow it down at times as well. Yeah. Everything goes through Cro Crocker and Richard for this Ponies. But Richard, nice move along the baseline. Oh, and it's almost stolen away by okay. Richard. It's going to go off the Hawks. Great Richard, job by Richard play. forcing that. That's what I'm saying about picking up the pressure. They might want to get, do that and, uh, again, speed this game up a little bit. Richard did a great job of picking his spot there. Going to go with a smaller lineup now, it looks like. Jackson Smith. Who, who makes things happen. Yeah, he's been phenomenal off the bench all year so far for this Pony squad. Uh, I was conversation out on the court. He gave a warning, I think, to the Herman bench. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wasn't quite sure what was going on there at <laughs> first, but warning issued, so something to watch. Richard drives inside, yeah. kicks it out. Connor, he's got such a good-looking shot, but off the mark there. Controlled by Wyman. Mark, does that mean the head coach has to remain seated now that there's been a I don't. I don't think so. Well, either way, Coach Mark Reed, he takes a seat. And Henderson goes to the rim for two. Wyman. Wyman has four rebounds already and with his seven points. Not a, not a bad day <laughs> at the office early in the first quarter. No. 
going the Hawks way so far. Oh, nice. Inside, Richard knocks it out of bounds. It is going to stay the way of the Hawks. Edwards two, Henderson two, Wyman seven. That's the scoring so far on the, for the Hawks on their side. They've done an excellent job early on of getting into their offense, mm -hmm. finding a good look, and making the most of it. We mentioned them staying in the game early is a key here because, you know, if you're in the game, you know, <laughs> they're going to have confidence as the game goes on. Absolutely. And travel. really starts the way to do that. But that is a travel indeed right there. Ball's going to go back to the ponies. Much to the, to the delight of the Pony student section. Brightly colored over there, Mark. You can't miss that. It's a great crowd here. First day back from school vacation, and uh, they have packed this place. Absolutely. A lot of excitement and buzz in the gym right now is Richard. Trying to set up things for the Ponies. Early on, they've all, I, I said it before, but I'm surprised with how content they've been to kind of slow things down. As I say it, Richard to the rim, fouled. Maybe that's why I'm trying to, try to lower things down. down. As I say yeah. it, Richard to the rim. As that is going to be Edwards' second foul of this first quarter. And, and that's, that's big because, um, you know, Coach Mockery, you know, tell, tell us they don't have a lot of depth right now, and uh, they're going to have to need somebody to step up. And he's Coach Mark Reed's going to leave him in as Richard. Good on the first, off on the second. Ball knocked out of bounds off the Hawks. Gets the ball to Chase there, man. Yeah, nice little inbounds play. Chase turn around from the post, off the mark, batted. Jackson Smith comes away with it. Nice drive inside. Richard throws up a shot off the mark, still battling for it. He's going to come away with the ball and the rebound there. You know, the, not the tallest guy in the court, but he might fight, be, the feistiest. He might be the hardest worker <laughs> as he gets two more. He he might, the feistiest. He might be the hardest worker <laughs> as he gets two more. He's got five early on in this one. Five of the Pony seven. Almost got another steal right there. Henderson had it for a moment. Skip pass across. Back inside to Wyman. Good ball movement here. Three put up off the mark. Battle for the rebound. The Hawks come away with it. Pass out to the corner. Open look at a three off the mark. Good right rebound. place, Second. right time. That was White. <laughs> Newly into the game. Timeout taken. We'll take it with you. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center is a practice that specializes in treating a variety of different conditions. We treat patients daily who suffer from chronic lower back and neck pain, headaches, repetitive stress disorders, work injuries, sports injuries, and more. Dr. Rick and our entire team at Ames Chiropractic are excited to welcome you to our brand new Bangor office located at 43 Longview Drive right behind Olive Garden. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center, helping you to naturally feel and be your very best. Welcome back here. That 60-second timeout ended at about 45 seconds. But either way, we're back to the action. He didn't miss anything, but Jackson Smith up and in for two. Mark, on that break, we were talking about how the Ponies might need to put pick up the pressure, and they're doing just that. Yeah. Pseudo full court press there. Defensive intensity definitely picked up. Checking in also for the Ponies is uh, Rayfield. He adds a definite defensive spark. Pass over to Henderson in the corner. Good Oof. ball movement, sorry Mark there, but good ball movement by the Hawks. They feel the quarterback of the football team too. High IQ player in all respects. Shot put up there, off the mark, batted around. Chase, he's gonna come away with it. Good, uh, good box out there by Chase. Was indeed Richard. All the way to the rim, up and in for two. 
Good by Chase. Was indeed Richard all the way to the rim. Replay courtesy main mapping companies. Richard, he's got seven in this first quarter now. Wouldn't be surprised here if we see one shot taken by the Hawks. Try to get the last shot of the quarter. Who try to get the Wyman? That's a good choice. He yeah, isn't taking a shot in a little while, but he's been very effective when he's tried. As that shot's off the mark, the Ponies, they're gonna have an opportunity to score. Two seconds on the clock. Rayfield takes a runner off the mark. 13-11, advantage Hawks through one. You're watching Maine High School Basketball with Eastern Maine Sports. Stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Welcome back here to Foxcroft Academy. As a couple players went off for seven points there in that first quarter mark. Jaden Richard on the pony side, much needed. He had seven of their 11, and on the other side, Wyman, Owen Wyman, he had seven of the 13 for the Hawks. So a couple guys early on making big impact plays. Yeah, Wyman got his early. Um, I think they put Crocker on him after that, kind of try to focus on him a little bit. Checking in for the Hawks is Kinney replacing White. Nice pass inside. Blocked nice away by Kenny. it looked like, but batted around off the leg of a hawk. Good job by Kenny inside, though. Not letting Richie uh, go up for that shot. This pony side, they're tough and physical, but without Mudachev on the court, they do lose a little bit of the height out there. And nice Kenny, hustle. Makes up for that on the hawk side. Nice pass inside. Rayfield, turn around, off the mark. Smith still battling for it. He's going to save it. Crocker from the corner. Off the mark. Connor the rebound. Dominating the boards on this trip. Smith is so scrappy inside. Definitely got to account for him at all times, or he'll come up with an offensive rebound. Connor the pass inside. Richard for a moment. Battle for the ball. Richard looking for a foul there. Ref elects to let him play on. Rocker, slowing things down for a moment. Been a long offensive trip, including the offensive rebounds here for the Ponies. Richard calls for a screen. Pulls back his dribble. He has such good ball, uh, body and ball control out on the court mark. Yes, he does. What a note to Olivier is still not back for Foscroft and uh, hold on there. Runner off the mark there, batted around. I think it's going to stay. Well, the Ponies, are they going to say it went off a Pony? That's going to go back to the Hawks there. We might have a discussion about this. I believe an um, official on our near side, closest to our section, might have had a different look at it. But uh, Point out, Olivier is not back yet. Um, I went away um, back home for um, school break. He's not back yet. And my point to that is Jackson Smith and him haven't been on the squad at the same time because Smith was out for the first two games. So get those two back together. That could add another aspect to this team. Absolutely could. Another spark off the bench for an already pretty dynamic scoring squad for the Ponies. you got a lot of guys that can score the ball. Speaking of scoring, Kinney. Took a hook shot inside. Good defense by Smith as he comes away with a rebound. Now going coast to coast. Blocked by Wyman. But they're going to get him for the foul there. As he comes away with a rebound. Now going coast to coast. Blocked by Wyman. And that's brought to you by Maine Mabin Company. As you can see, he got him with the body a little bit. Up top, he didn't get him. It looks like a clean block, but a little bump with the body. Either way, it's going to be Wyman's first foul of the game here. So he missed that free throw, but Jackson Smith already, probably only like maybe three or four minutes uh, playing action, already has four rebounds and two points. Smith good on the second. Pass ahead here for the Hawks as they're now running. Layup up and in for two. 
little, little surprise attack. The Hawks is there now that running. Edwards lay up, up and in for two. Out of the game with those two first quarter fouls. Get some energy, that little break. Yeah, and <laughs> able to get the fast break going there for the easy layup. Connor, the dribble handoff. We saw them run this play where Richard got all the way to the rim, got rewarded with a foul call. Nice pass by Richard to Crocker. Crocker up and in. Okay. Nice pass by Richard to Crocker. Crocker up. That replay courtesy of Main Mapping Company is nice find there by Richard. Great finish by Caden Crocker. Crocker's a leading scorer and uh, he first points on the board, so expect more. As Kenny was posting up inside. Connor a little too aggressive trying to not allow the ball to get inside. Gets whistled for the foul. His first, the Pony's first foul of the game. Pass inside. Good look. And travel called there before the shot was attempted. But nice look there by Henderson. And Edwards coming on the uh, far sideline. It's a good pass. Connor's uh, defense, they believe, forced that travel. The presence underneath there. 14-15 our score, 5-10 remaining in this first half. Oh, Crocker, nice job to corral that. Rayfield now has it. Pass to Connor. Play man to man. Ponies working the offense on this possession. Rayfield, the drive, pass out to Connor. Connor off the mark. Oh, nice shot by Crocker. Yeah, good job by Crocker and Rayfield able to get that ball back. Yeah. Connor, one dribble up and in for two. Connor's first two points of the game. First lead of the game for the Ponies. It is indeed 16-15. Hawks looking to slow things down. Get back to their half court style. And to get Wyman the ball back is Shots off the mark there, but he had seven in that first quarter. Jump ball called. Good bad. Every time Jackson Smith is involved, <laughs> you know, and the ball's loose, you know, he's always involved. Absolutely is indeed. Budachev checks back in for the Ponies. On the other side, it's Glidden coming in, replacing, I believe it was Hen uh, Edwards, rather. Shot put up there off the mark. Kinney, good job battling inside, up and in, plus the hard. Got put up there, off the mark. Kinney, good job battling inside. That replay courtesy of main mapping company there is great job by Kinney, able to get involved. A lot of size. Yeah, okay, he's only a sophomore. You know, most of these uh, players getting playing time other than White, a uh, uh, young underclassman. Good valuable experience here. That ball was batted for a moment, but Kinney off on the free throw. Richard now passed over to Connor. Connor back to Smith. Smith, Smith so good at that. Inside off the mark. Mudachev battle for the rebound. A lot of contact as both players went for the ball there. I think a foul on Wyman, I believe. Nope. Kinney. Foul on Kinney inside. His first. Team's fourth. Budachev inside. Nice move off the mark. Good rebound by Henderson. Pass ahead to Wyman. Wyman takes it. Shot inside the elbow off the mark. And caught. Blocked that one away. Shot of Glidden turned back. Blocked and got the rebound. Good job by Adam Connor. Yeah, he's done well defensively. It's a deep three. Crocker up and in. Yeah, he's done well defensively. It's a deep three. Crocker. Does not take a lot of time for Crocker to get his shot off. And he can score from just about anywhere in the half court. So dangerous. The lead swings back the way of the Ponies. Law pass inside, not able to handle it as Kinney. And the sale out of bounds goes back to the Ponies. 2.48 remaining in this first half. 
Carter going to the bench. He did a good job underneath um, a lot of presence there. Uh, they, yeah, okay. <laughs> is indeed Richard. Henderson's in the game for the Ponies. Yep. Nice move by Richard. Lost the dribble for a moment. Gets it back out. Smith up fake. All the way to the rim. A lot of contact. Gets his own miss. Richard the spin. Dump off inside. Foul. Richard the spin. Dump off inside. Foul. Since that slow start for the Ponies and the hot start for the Hawks, the Ponies have made some adjustments and, you know, some guys like Smith, Jackson Smith, six rebounds, you know, in, in limited minutes. Well, he's played this whole thing quarter, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, he came in late. Yeah. Making the most of the minutes while he is out there. Just such an impactful player. As both free throws, I believe, are up and in there by Chase. They were. They're now four for six from the line today are the Ponies. On the other end is Hurd. Pass over to Henderson. They're looking for Wyman. Wyman is looking for Kenny. Sails out of bounds. Wyman had just a red hot start to the game, but they haven't quite been able to get the ball back to him in scoring opportunities. He had seven in that first quarter. Seven very early in that first quarter, and I think credit the Ponies for, you know, kind of maybe focusing on him a little bit more now. As Richard, he's focusing on getting to the rim. They're going to call him for the travel. It's a nice shot, Mark. Maybe yeah. caught one extra step in there, a slide of the pivot foot, something. He, he didn't agree, but Ruff has the final say, and he, no, no real argument from the Ponies' uh, bench. Henderson on the other end. Wyman has him. He is getting a lot of added pressure. Shot from the corner, put up off the mark. Yeah. Guess who? Jackson Smith on the board. Seven rebounds. Wyman, when he touches the ball, he's getting some added attention. <laughs> Richard ended up on the ground there. Crowd wanted to travel, not called. Wyman got the rebound inside. One oh, side wanted to travel, one side wanted to foul. Made everybody unhappy on that. The <laughs> result was a rebound. Yeah. And foul by Crocker, but. That's just the Ponies third and the first on Brock. I think part of our Black Bear Crane halftime show, I think we're going to be able to show you some uh, replays of the, all these replays in the first half, some highlights. So we stick around for the Black Bear Crane halftime show. Coming up in just about a minute 15 is Henderson. He takes a three up and in. <laughs> Henderson, he's got five on the game now. Big Fos three in that spot, Mark. Foscroft's winning this game, but... Coach Mark Reed's going to be the happier coach at halftime, I believe. Absolutely, with an opportunity to galvanize your group and if they could start the second half the way they started the first. No doubt about this it. This is going to be a great game down the stretch here, Mark. Richard, great move off the mark. Henderson, he's skied in for the rebound. That's going to be a push call against again. the Hawks. Off the there. mark. Henderson, he's skied in for the rebound. So that push there. That's on Henderson. He just hit the three at the other end. That's his second with 45 seconds remaining here in this first half. Crocker, two dribbles inside. Smith, reverse off the mark. Wyman. Six rebound for Wyman. Along with those seven points. Granted, they all came in that first quarter. Got 30 seconds remaining here in the second. I imagine one shot territory here for the Hawks. But pass inside to Kenny, and they're going to call Henderson with two hands on the back there. So opportunity for a set play here. I mean, either way, Coach Reed's going to be happy going to have time, but if he can go with a lead, even more. Absolutely. And give credit to the Hawks, the way they've played this first half of action. It's been their style of play. They like the half-court game, slowing the tempo down. Five seconds now. Pass over to Wyman. Richard coming to double. Henderson, he's going to have to take a three. He does. Oh, off the glass, off the rim, off the mark. 21-20 is going to be how this first half of action ends. Ponies up one. Yeah, it's very uh, entertaining first half, and uh, 
Good job by Herman hanging hanging tough with a tough uh, police team, a young Hawks team, and uh, kudos to them. We're in for a fun fun second half. Uh, is that? that we are. Stick around. We're going to have more for you in talking about that first half of action on the Black Bear Crane Halftime Show. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting case with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center is a practice that specializes in treating a variety of different conditions. We treat patients daily who suffer from chronic lower back and neck pain, headaches, repetitive stress disorders, work injuries, sports injuries, and more. Dr. Rick and our entire team at Ames Chiropractic are excited to welcome you to our brand new Bangor office located at 43 Longview Drive right behind Olive Garden. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center, helping you to naturally feel and be your very best. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Call and stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Brothers Meats is a family owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 340 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Welcome back to Foxcroft Academy and thank you for rejoining us on the Black Bear Crane Halftime Show. Mark, what a first half of action that was. Certainly was. Herman got off to a hard start. Foxcroft made some adjustments, but you know, it's still a one point game here. It's going to be a fun, fun second half and uh, kudos to Herman I and mean, Owen Wyman to get the hot start going for them and uh, you know Jaden Richard came back with his seven first half points and uh, Jackson Smith has really made the difference in why the ponies have the one point lead right now. That they do and before we talk a little bit more about Jackson Smith and what he was able to do in that first half coming off the bench the two leading scorers on the game at least as I can see them right now is Wyman and Richard they had all of their seven points they each had seven in that first quarter so second quarter was a lot of other guys so you can see that both defenses kind of stepped up keyed on those players, but you've got other people making plays now. Crocker, he had a nice second quarter there. He had five points, big three as well. Um, every point right now matters at 21-20, but Jackson Smith 
Maybe it's not all coming the way of points, but rebounding especially, he dominated that first half. Yeah, I got him down for seven rebounds. And, again, he didn't start the game. He comes off the bench and just provides a spot for them every time he, every time he comes in. Yeah, and Mark, we can see the Hawks. They're already back out of the locker room with five minutes remaining here in this halftime. What do you think of the brief but conversation was in the locker room there for the Hawks? Do what you did in the first half. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, you know, one of our keys at the beginning of the game is just stay in the game. <laughs> you know, and, and they've done that and more. I mean, it's a one-point game, and, and, you know, they have to have the confidence right now that they can play with, with these guys and, and see what happens in the second half. Absolutely, and they have played with them, and they've looked like a very competitive uh, team in that first half of action. They impose their style onto the Ponies. It was a lot of half-court offense, and the few times the Ponies applied pressure, mm -hmm. sure, there might have been a few turnovers, but it didn't dictate the tempo or energy of that first half. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the Ponies. What do you think the conversation with Coach Toby Nelson is like in that locker room right now? Um, step it up defensively. Keep doing what you've been doing on Wyman after, the, you know, not what you did at the beginning of the game, but after that, they made some adjustments. Um, keep doing that and speed up this game a little bit. They, I mean, it's 21 20. They're on pace to be 42 to 40 here. Um, you know, if you ask Herman before the game, yeah, keep it in the 30s and 40s. That's what they want. Um, you know, Foscroft has the more experienced team, the veteran team. They, they should push the tempo here a little bit. Absolutely, and I expect to see them apply a little bit more full court pressure or half court pressure. Uh, make it a little bit harder and try to just up the tempo. Another thing to note is with the uh, youth of this Hawk side, they don't have quite as much depth. And with foul trouble, Edwards didn't play as much of that first half. He has the two fouls. Henderson, he picked up his second foul late in that first half for the Hawks. So those two have two fouls apiece, but other than that, it was a pretty clean first half of action in terms of fouls or foul trouble. Yeah, one last stat I want to mention, um, Zach, rebounds, 13-13. Coach Reed has to be happy with that, too, because Foscroft, he mentioned it. They got eight football players on the team that won a state championship. They're, they're the most, most physical team, and Herman's been able to match that here in the first half. That they have, and they have great size inside Kenny. He uh, didn't convert it, but nice three-point uh, three opportunity inside. Um, on the end one, but on off an offensive rebound from him. So able to have some nice off the bench presence so far in this one. We've got 232 remaining here in this first, I mean, uh, halftime report action. We're gonna send it over to a quick replay courtesy of main mapping company. Doesn't look like that one was coming through for you, but that was from this game. We will definitely have the replays from tonight's action up for you after the game as well. We really want to thank our friends at Main Mapping Company for sponsoring that element of our broadcast. But 145 remaining here at the Black Bear Crane Halftime Show, and 145 remaining at halftime. We're going to send it over to one more brief commercial break and rejoin you for the second half. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center is a practice that specializes in treating a variety of different conditions. We treat patients daily who suffer from chronic lower back and neck pain, headaches, repetitive stress disorders, work injuries, sports injuries, and more. Dr. Rick and our entire team at Ames Chiropractic are excited to welcome you to our brand new Bangor office located at 43 Longview Drive, right behind Olive Garden. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center, helping you to naturally feel and be your very best. Welcome back here to Foxcroft Academy with under 30 seconds remaining at halftime here 
want to take the opportunity to thank our halftime sponsor, Black Bear Crane. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman. Covered the city main with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast erection, to modular home and communications equipment. Call 977-BEAR today. Also, if you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing available. Great selection of new and used. Call 207-368-5751. And with that, we prepare for the second half. I believe there was actually some confusion on whose ball it was there. Coach Toby Nelson almost came out onto the court to let the uh, officials and everyone else know that it is, in fact, a pony's ball as they get this second half started. Richard has it. Good screen inside over to Mudachev. Extra pass. Mudachev to chase up and in for two. Great look inside. That's how the second half is going to get started. Kinney also starting this second half for the Hawks. Pass thrown. Intended for Wyman. It's going to sail out of bounds. There's Richard. He's going to be bringing it the other way for the Pony. So not exactly the start the Hawks were looking for out of halftime here. Richard, nice move all the way up and in. The Hawks are looking for out of halftime here. Richard, nice move. Beautiful move. Beautiful move, and that's what the doctor ordered for the Ponies to start this second half. 4-0 run very early and applying a lot of pressure. Richard flying all over the court. Definitely don't want to let Wyman get the ball. A lot of attention being played to him. Extra pass was tipped for a moment. Heard now has it. Pass over to Edwards. Edwards. Back to Henderson. Over to Wyman. Sets the feet. Takes a three off the mark. Battle for the rebound. Taken away by Kinney. One dribble off the mark. Rebound this time to the Ponies. Crocker now has it. Richard. Pass inside. Over to Chase. Back to Crocker. Takes a look at the three. Off the mark. One weakness um, for these ponies uh, is three-point shooting. Crocker has eight of them this year. Nobody else has more than two. Connor has two, and, everybody, and a few others have one. But so that's a kind of a weakness of the ponies. The Crocker, definitely not a weakness no. in this game. He can make it from anywhere. Nice pass inside. Wyman to Kinney. Mudachev is going to be called for the foul. Yeah, saying that, Crocker shoots about you know, 40% from three. So, you know, he, that's a, he's quite, got quite the range. It's going to be Mudachev's first. That's the first foul of this second half. First free throws of the game for the Hawks. Yeah. Well, I believe Kenny had one attempt on the uh, three-point okay. play that wasn't able to convert. And off on the first here. So Hawks still looking for their first points in the second half, Mark. And they're not going to get it on that one. But yeah, really battle on the boards. And that was Kenny coming in after the missed free throw. And the jump ball is going to go the way of the Hawks. And that's going to be White checking into the game, replacing Kinney. Henderson, pass into Hurd. Back to White. Hawks. Keeping with this half-court offense, good drive inside. One more pass, Wyman has it. Ball got tipped out of his hands, Richard has it. One-on-one -on -one opportunity, up and in. Tipped out of his hands, Richard has it. One-on-one -on -one opportunity, up and in. That's courtesy of Maine Map and Company, thank you to them. Richard's flying and gliding for two additional points. Shot off the mark inside. That was Wyman that tried it. Richard, he gets stopped in transition here. Pass tipped away inside. White, he comes away with it. Ponies keeping the pressure up. Chase almost gets the steal there. Nice extra pass. Henderson all the way to oh, the rim. Beautiful oh, by contact, Richard. But Richard from behind. A good defense by Crocker. Setting up and letting Richard come in. Good defense overall. Good pass in the air from Richard to up and in for two. 8-0 style. Guess what? Coach Nelson and the Ponies won. Good pass in the air from Richard to 
is indeed 29-20 the score. Coach Mark Reed, he's going to want to talk it over. We'll take a break and rejoin you. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Call and stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Welcome back here at Foxcroft Academy. 4.44 remaining in this third quarter, and it was number 44 on the attempt last trip down for the Ponies. Went up and in for two. Budichev being impactful in this second half as Richard always impactful. Great defense just flying all over the court. Yeah, they've certainly picked up the defensive pressure. Especially on ball is where you're noticing a lot of that. Don't give the opportunity for the Hawks to get so comfortable and really massage this half-court offense that they were doing so successfully in that first half. Edwards, elbow line, off the mark. Crocker, he came away with it, passes it over to Richard. Boney's looking to add on to their already impressive 8-0 run. Connor, move inside, up and in for two. So 10-0 here in the second half. 10-0 run. Hawks looking for their first points of this second half. White to Henderson. Henderson to Wyman. Wyman looking to get back involved in the scoring column. And that's going to be off the hands of Hurd. Transition opportunity now for the Ponies. Kicked away, but they're going to say it was... Maybe deflected originally. Oh. Richard deflects it right back, gets the ball. Way up for two. Maybe deflected originally. Oh. Richard deflects it right back, gets the ball. What a play by Richard. Richard. Anything you can do, I can do better as he gets the ball right back. He's got 13 on the game, six this quarter. Foul line off the mark. Smith has it up to Crocker. 12-0 run. Jackson Smith looking to make it 14, he does. Oh, run. Jackson Smith looking to make it. That was brought to you by Maine Map and Company, and uh, Jackson Smith already has nine rebounds, and uh, now he has five points. There's going to be a lot of guys causing great impacts out on the court. It's also important to mention that was uh, yep. a foul went against Henderson. That's Henderson's third foul. Could be something to watch as we have 255 remaining here in this third quarter. But, you know, you've got a few guys doing a lot of positive things as Smith converts the three-point opportunity there. But Jackson Smith, I think, is at the top of it. I mean, when he checked in, the energy and momentum wasn't exactly on the pony side. And rebounding, physicality, energy, he's provided a lot of that throughout he's, this game. He surely has. I mean... You're right, the energy was all on Herman's side until he stepped, in, stepped foot in the game. And now the energy, you can start to feel it building in the gym here as this run continues to grow. 13-0 so far for the Ponies. Hawks looking to snap it here. Henderson, he has a clean look. He can make that. He does. The second three-pointer of the game. Broke that run. That's a good way to do it. Three-pointer right there. 34-23 our score. Richard, all the way to the rim, off the mark, but fouled. If that's on Henderson, that's his fourth. And that is, is and they're going to leave him out. Well, now substitution might be checking in now. So he had, Richard had seven points the first quarter. He has seven points in the 
in the first quarter, and then he has seven points now in the third quarter also. Makes that eight. Make that eight indeed. It's, it was uh, Wigan that checked in for uh, the Hawks, replacing Henderson with those four fouls. Henderson, he's been doing a lot tonight for the Hawks. That's stolen away. Momentum all in favor of the Ponies is Richard. Shot fake, and he's going to have a chance for two at the line. So Richard, he's up to 15 on the game. Seven in the first quarter, eight already in the third with 152 remaining. He's and now four for, four for five from the line now. True on the second as well. We did a... Coach Nelson said halftime, Zach. You know, you broadcast the game with him. You, you can get inside his mind. Well, if, if I could do that, I'd, <laughs> I'd be a happy man. <laughs> happy man is Rayfield. He got the steal, unable to convert in the fast break. A lot of contact, block called. That's going to be, I believe, on third. They call that on 32. I don't think there's a 32 on the court, so I believe that's actually against Hurd there. That would make it Hurd second. Third, they put 32 up on the board, but I believe that was the situation. 42 in Hurd. Checking to the game is Ham for the Hawks. Smith inside. Hook shot off the mark. But battle for, Kenny actually did a great job on the second opportunity, able to make sure that ball wasn't turned over. Hurd takes a runner off the mark. Kenny, good rebound. Henderson gets a block. Continuing to battle for the ball, but Kenny, great hustle on his part. Pass out, Wyman, three up and in. He's in double digits. Those are his first points since the opening quarter, but what a way to do it. Richard, all the way to the rim, off the mark. Hurd comes away with it. Credit Kenny that last time down. I think he got three, I put him down for three offensive rebounds just on that possession. Definitely making things happen. On the Hawk side, keeping the plays and possessions alive. Wyman, post-up move inside. Good defense there by Smith, able to force the miss. And good box out by Crocker, setting up that rebound for Richard. Richard, he's going to slow down the tempo for this possession. Looking to take one shot here. 40 to 26 the score. So far, it's a 19 point quarter for the Ponies. Five seconds remaining now in the third. Richard hands it off. Crocker. Pass over to Henderson. Henderson clean look up and in. Pass over to Henderson. Henderson clean look up. And Henderson with those two points. Greece the lead 42-26. Our score through three. We're going to take a quick break and rejoin you for the fourth. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Riles Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state-of-the-art automatic car wash. Riles Garage, call them at 207-564-3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. I truly believe that if you're gonna do something better, you gotta start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now, and that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. School is on there, but it's right. Welcome back here at Foxcroft Academy. As what a quarter that third quarter was for the Ponies. They doubled their scoring on the game. So they had 21 that quarter. They had 21 in the first half. As it is now 42-26, 21-6 quarter. 
Yeah, I think if I have a bad first half of my day tomorrow, I'm going to call uh, Toby Nelson and maybe I'm um, getting some pointers on how to have a better second half of my day. I, I could really <laughs> use that on uh, most of my broadcast talents as well there, Mark. Coming the other way are the Hawks. Wiggins swung it over to Hurd. Henderson, he's still out. He was doing a lot of the primary ball handling for this Hawks squad, but he has four fouls. Edwards looking for inside was to Kenny, but good tip away to Connor. I want to say there's so many people that have stepped up in that quarter. I mean, Richard had 10 points, but um, deep from Jackson Smith still doing his thing on the boards. They had six different scores in that third quarter. And that variety really makes this pony squad tough, difficult, and challenging. Any word you want to insert to deal with when they're firing on all cylinders, especially defensively. Another stat, too. Um, 9 for 11 in the game, shoot free throws, 5 for 5 in that quarter. That'll help you win. Yeah. Richard takes the dribble handoff. So shifty, gets all the way inside. Falls off the front of the rim. He did everything but fall through the bottom of the net on that attempt. It's gonna be Chase whistle for the foul. We like Kenny now for 10 rebounds, Zach. So quality game from him. He only has two points, but he's doing on other aspects of the game. Be uh. Bango Savings Bank post game show. At the end of this, we'll be announcing the uh, play of the game. Bango Savings Bank play of the game. Get a $10 <laughs> gift card. A lot of players vying for that so far in today's action. Pull up two is good. Nice shot there. Brady Herb. And I want to say about Herman, this experience right here, this type of game, in next year and the year after, you're going to see the benefits of that. It takes time, but they're, they're definitely going to. They show the, and some of the coach reads that before the game. They played good quarter and a half, two quarters. It's, it's doing it the whole time. And that, you know, that'll, that'll come. It's definitely learning and growth, but I'd say they played as great as in that first half as you could have. Mm -hmm. And give credit to the ponies, too. The ponies did a lot they hadn't been doing in that first half in that third quarter. And it was kind of more about what the ponies started doing and the pressure they started applying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over our upcoming schedule, Zach. So um, Friday night will be in Milo Central at Penquist Boys Basketball. Um, we're going to try to have the, the JV game video only at 5 in the, in the uh, varsity game at 6.15 pregame show. Saturday, you and I will be in uh, Guilford for Valley PCHS doubleheader. All the action starts at 12.45. And you can subscribe to the Eastern Maine Sports Media YouTube channel. And you'll see when we're live and have all of our other content gathered there as well as Muduchev from the corner off the mark. Oh. Ripped away by Chase. It's going to go Herman away, but, but good job by Chase battling there. Good battle indeed as the Ponies, they're going to keep the pressure up, it looks like. Coming out with a token full court pressure here. Hurd gets it. And again, without your primary ball handler of Henderson on the bench with those four fouls, it be ten seconds. close to a 10 second. It is. Coach Mark Reed was, I believe, trying to get the timeout taken there. Oh, and he might get it. Official on the uh, on our near side again. He was able to hear in that situation. So one official caught it. The other official did not. We're going to keep it here because that's just a 30-second timeout. Um, Want to take the opportunity to thank some of the sponsors who have helped make this broadcast free and accessible for everybody. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman. Covering the city of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons from roof justices, HVAC units, steel and precast erection to modular home and communications equipment. Call 977-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing available. Great selection of new and used. Call 207 368 5751. Also want to thank the Mapping Company. They've been attached to our replays tonight, so we want to thank them for sponsoring that element of our broadcast. A lot of good replays, and it gives us, you know, when both teams are playing them in a half-court game, gives us more chance to do some replays. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And we'll have those posted at some point for your enjoyment as well, as well as the game will stay live on our, will stay as a video, I should say, um, on our YouTube channel in the live column, so you can check out all the replays of this action later on. Wigan now directing traffic. Pass over, it's Wyman now. 
Hawks working their offense now. Not a bad opportunity to do so. I mean, this game still has an opportunity here if you get a couple things to go your way, but the very worst, there's a lot of things you can take positive from this game as we approach five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Um, work your offense. Try to get back into those habits you established in that first half of action is Richard. A lot of contact. He's going to go to the line for two. Well, thought he was, but this is going to go before the shot, it seems. Um, but as I was saying before that, there's a lot of things that the Hawks can take from this game and look in a positive light. I mean, you played, a, you played your brand of basketball for an entire first half, and so far this fourth quarter, it's been fairly even. The only scoring's come off the hands of Hurd and yeah. potentially Richard here, as he did get to go to the line. Good on the first. He's now up to 18 on the game. Jackson Smith replacing Mudichev. So coming up for these two teams. Doesn't get any easier for either one of them. Uh, both play on Thursday night. Uh, Herman will be home against Old Town, and Foxcroft will be at Dexter. Yeah, not easier indeed. He's Dexter, one of the top teams in uh, Class C on the boys' side, as girls' side as well as... You were with us at the beginning of the broadcast. They improved to 7-0 in a victory over Stearns tonight. On the other end, it was Richard missing the second half of those free throw attempts. Kinney, he's going to get called for travel inside. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Kinney. Though. Yeah. I mean, for a young player, just a sophomore, if he can work on just solidifying his feet, he's going to be a tough player mm -hmm. to deal with on the low post. Yeah, and, years and as Coach Reed said, they're – roles uh, what they may be if they had a few more seniors so they, he's getting this, this time that's just going to help him in the next two and a half years now that he is it was connor that had it for a moment nice pass inside smith chase extra pass crocker from the corner three it's inside smith chase extra pass crocker from the corner three. thank you main mapping for that replay right there is crocker gets the three to fall his second of the game that increases the lead 46-28 with 3.50 remaining in this fourth quarter. As Richard pokes that one away. Throw it off the hawk and it's going to go back to the ponies. Great heads up play there. He's just a heads up player. That, I mean, yeah, that's who you want as your point guard if you're a coach. Has great court awareness as well. Body control, ball control, understands where to go. Definitely someone you want on your basketball team, especially at the point guard position. No doubt about it. Everything goes you know, through him and Crocker, and um, that's what Coach Nelson wants. And Richard's only a junior, too. Yep. Richard Ooh. tried to curve that one inside to Smith. Didn't go where intended, but it stays with the ponies. Slowing things down a little bit. Maybe looking to work there. Half-court offense, I laugh because as I was saying it, Crocker puts up a three. Dangerous from anywhere in the half-court, though. <laughs> Henderson had the four fouls, has checked back in. Three oh, up and in, that's Edwards. That's a nice looking shot. Four fouls, has checked back in. Three oh, up and in, that's Edwards. You saw the three there. Timeout was quickly taken, I believe, by Coach Mark Reed. Uh, let's keep it here as we joined you a little bit late in that. I think it's only a 30-second timeout here, Mark. Maybe this is a learning opportunity as well, a situational-type timeout. 46-31 uh, our score, so it's a 15-point game with under three minutes remaining. Um, following that three, I expect I expect to see a full court press here, Mark. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. Just saying, you you want to play it like you know you still got a chance in this game. Again, 15 points. You never know. You know, Frostcraft misses a few free throws. Some some things happen. Get some turnovers. Um, and right now, you know, Mark Reed's a great coach, and he's going to be teaching his kids right to the end of this uh, game. Yeah, and it's, it's at the least it's a coaching opportunity and coaching mm -hmm. moment. The best, you've got a chance to get back into this game if, like you said, yeah. some missed free throws come their way. Yeah, they're not, they didn't pick up full court, but, but, um, but again, it's a coaching moment, and, and he's a... Uh... Coaching moment indeed. I was a little bit surprised not to see the full court press, but it looks like they're coming in the half court. There's the trap on Richard there. Pass inside, oh, locked out of bounds. There's the trap on Richard there. Pass inside, oh, locked out of bounds. You saw Wyman say, no, no, no. 
Great defensive effort by him on that one. Richard curling off the screen, puts him a shot, off the mark, rebound. Henderson in the Hawks. Gonna have an opportunity at a pull up three, up and in. So just like that, the lead is to 12. 46-34 is our score. Hawk staying with his half court trap. Almost got a steal there. Chase has it inside. And they're doing last few possessions that done Herman a favor by taking that shot. Absolutely. Foul gonna be called there against Hurd. It's gonna be one and one opportunity for arguably the best free throw shooter on the pony side. Yeah, hit him or Crocker, yeah. We just saw Crocker shooting 80 to 89%. Not bad. That's not bad at all. <laughs> Richard up and in on the front end of the one and one. That's also Hurd's fourth foul. So Henderson and Hurd, they each have four for the Hawks. 159 remaining. Off on the second is Richard. Wyman came away with the board. So I got Kenny and Wyman combining for 18 rebounds. So that's a good sign. Yeah, they're not the bonuses, so it doesn't hurt them, but not really something you want to do that far from the basket. No, I don't want to stop the clock in this opportunity, but like you said, Ponies, they're not in any foul trouble here. Three fouls to their name in this second half. They've done a great job behind the arc tonight as well, making a lot of threes, helping them come back in this one a little bit. Another shot put up there off the mark. Rayfield came away with the board. See if the Ponies try to slow it down now and the best of their ability is I'm sure the Hawks are going to try to force some pressure here. Chase has it. 125 remaining now. Oh, no. side. Nice extra tip by Connor over to Smith. But wise not to take that shot. Chase with the pass make off the catch. Wyman tipped it away though. And it's going to go back to the Hawks. 111 remaining. 47-34. Henderson and Wyman were in the same spot. Wyman. Hawks are going to have to take a shot quickly here as they do. Hurd puts up a three off the mark. Smith the rebound. Double digits there. He's got 10 rebounds. Connor has it. Under 45 seconds remaining here in this fourth quarter. It's a 13 point lead. Hawks still applying pressure. Jackson Smith blocked at the rim by Kinney. Third block for Kinney. Nice pass ahead. Henderson to Edwards. To Coach Mark Reed, he's gonna take a timeout. That's gonna cut the lead to 11. We're gonna keep it here with 32.6 remaining in the game mark. Yeah, we can start talking with 11-point game with 32 seconds left. We're about maybe Bangor Savings Bank play of the game. Um, I think there's definitely a few candidates. Um, you know, Richard has 19 points. He has three steals, three rebounds. Uh, Jackson Smith came off the bench at six points, ten rebounds. Crocker eight points. You know, a lot of a lot of guys doing it. Um, you know, for the for the uh, ponies tonight. So um, we can kind of think about that, and um, we'll try to get. Coach Nelson and the, whoever we named the play of the game uh, as post-game guests come up here to talk to you. Yeah, and add my two cents in just to that part of the conversation. I think Jaden Richard, when you look at the scoreboard, and that third quarter is where the game changed, and he had 10 of the points in that third quarter, which kind of you know solidified the rest of that game and the rest of the game as it's been up to this point. Still some time on the clock, but with it being an 11-point game, um, I think Jaden Richard is definitely a strong bid for the Bangor Savings Bank player of the game as the Ponies, they're dealing with a full court press here. Chase was able to get it into Rayfield. Rayfield back to Chase, pass ahead to Connor. Wyman trying to get a steal there on Connor, but Connor's going to have an opportunity to go to the line with a one on one chance. And we will get um, the post game interviews from. Um if the score holds from Coach Nelson and uh, play of the game. I think we can say that now. Yeah, Jaden Richard, just with the, you know, the tempo of the game, Jackson Smith is right there. But um, overall, the effort of Jaden Richard out here today is the front end of the one-on-one -on -one good for Connor. He will be our Bangor Savings Bank player of the game, Jaden Richard. 
Second shot from the free throw line, up and in. That's gonna stretch the lead to 13 with now approaching 20 seconds remaining. Edwards gonna go all the way to the rim. A lot of contact, no call. They're staying after Richard now. He's driven right through him. I think they're trying to foul. I think so. With now under 10 seconds left to see if they just elect to not foul here. After this game, we'll take one break, Zach, and uh, we'll get, get some interviews. That we will. That's going to be the final from Foster Off Academy. 49-36 ponies. They come away with the victory. We're going to take a quick break and rejoin you for the Bangor Saints Bank post game. I truly believe that if you're going to do something better, you got to start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now, and that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. Welcome back here as I'm joined by Jaden Richard as he makes his way up. Jaden, congratulations. You're going to be our Bangor Savings Bank player of the game. This is for you. It's a $10 gift card. You can spend it however you want. Okay, thank you. I can, I can tell you're breathing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a little bit. You had a great performance. You ended up with 19 points. We had you for three steals at least. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about that game because the first half there, it was tightly contested. That yeah, was for a sure. Close first half of action. What was your mindset entering that second half? You had the 10 points in the third quarter. What was your mindset shift coming into that second half of action? Well, I think, in my opinion, we're a better team than them. We came out first half a little rough. We didn't, weren't playing together as a team well, and then we had a good, Coach, Coach Nelson had a good uh, halftime speech, and we came out with a little more intensity, and uh, I guess we just came together a little better. From your end, uh, and specifically what you were doing out there on the court, what were you seeing that was working and kind of got you going tonight and, and you ended up with the 19 points? What were you looking and finding out there that you took advantage of? Well, I knew I was faster than my guy. I knew I was quicker. I knew I could get by him whenever I wanted, so I just took advantage of that pretty much and I got to the hoop. So you guys are now 4-2. and two. There's still a lot of season left to be played. For sure. But with a tough competitive game like this that you guys claw back and kind of solidify the game in the way you believed you would from the beginning, where do you think that this helps make you guys feel momentum-wise as you prepare for the rest of the season? And where uh, do you think that you're going to end up? I think this is a good win, especially it's our first home win, so it was good to get us started for the season. And, I mean, hopefully we can end up looking good for seeding-wise when it comes to playoffs, and that's all we can ask for at the moment. Well, you're a great player, Jaden Richard, and he's our Bangor Savings Bank player of the game. We want to thank you for joining us. You can pass the headset off to Coach Nelson. Uh, it looks like... We get him. He's going to finally rejoin us up here in the booth, and uh, he does a great job. Congratulations. Thank Dave. you very great much. Game. Might be a little sweaty. <laughs> Coach Toby Nelson, it's nice to have you back up here in the broadcast <laughs> booth with us. Uh, joking aside, let's talk about the game. That first half of yeah. action was tightly contested. Uh, I asked Jane about this a minute ago. What was that locker room conversation like? Well, we understood that Herman's a young team, they're inexperienced, but that doesn't make them a, a team that can't be dangerous, right? And they played a really good first half. They, they did some things to us that we just weren't comfortable with, and we weren't running through offensive sets. And, uh, you know, we're just, we're, we're still trying to figure some things out here. You know, we're, we're a, uh, I say a young basketball team. We're not young as far as school age, but we got a lot of guys that haven't seen a lot of time yet, and so we're really starting to get into that. And um, so the, the halftime speech wasn't a—it wasn't a you know big screaming speech. It was no need to. With this, with this group, you don't have to do that. But you know, we talked about taking care of the basketball, running through our offense, getting the taking the easy shot as opposed to taking the hard shot. Right? You take a high percentage shot, you got a better chance of making it. And those finally started to fall in the second half. We turned them over a little bit. Uh, the defensive intensity got a little bit better. Better. And uh, you know we were able to build a lead to a fairly comfortable, but not so comfortable win. So yeah, I talked about that second that halftime speech because the second half and third quarter, especially, game kind of flipped on its head. You had 21 points in the first half, you had 21 points in yeah. the third quarter. So that's really where the game was made and changed completely. 
Um, Jaden Richard, I mean, he had, a, he had a night, but you had a lot of guys contribute well. Kind of talk a little bit, because I don't know if you've had this opportunity to talk about Jaden's leadership out on the court, at the, especially at the point guard position, mm. and getting others involved as well. Kind of talk about his performance tonight and what he brings to your group as a whole. Well, he and he and Caden have, have played a lot of basketball. Caden a senior, and of course Jaden a junior. Um, and they, they bring just that steady leadership. You know, Jaden's a uh, he does some stuff where you're sitting, you're squirming in your seat, like, oh, what do you do? And then he'll, he'll put a shot in, you know. So uh, he does a lot of good stuff for us, and he's he's a fun kid to be around, uh, easy to coach, um, understands the game, and tries to do what he can to make his teammates better. And uh, so you know, we're we're very fortunate to have a player like like him on our on our uh, team, and and doing very very well so far this season. Yeah, and one other player we wanted to mention because he almost got our Bengals big player of the game just based off effort, energy, intensity alone. Jackson Smith mm. off the bench for yep. you guys. He he doesn't always get the limelight with the dirty work that he does out on the court, but we had him for at least 10 rebounds. Yeah. And kind of talk about when he stepped into the game, the energy kind of picks up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and, and Jack's one of those players. He, he plays a pivotal role for our club. He comes off the bench. He gives us some scoring punch, but he gives us some toughness. that uh, Not not say we don't have with our starters, but he gives us that little, little edge where he keeps plays alive. And so while he might not get a basket, he's keeping a play alive for Jaden or Caden or Adam or someone else to get a basket. So that's as good as scoring, right? It's just like an assist as far as that goes. So he does some really, really nice things for us. Not to just single him out because it was a really a, a good team effort tonight, but, but Jack did a Real nice job off the bench for us this yeah. evening, as he does every night. No well, final question here for you, coaches. I'm sure you want to let you get to the locker room. Um, got a tough matchup against mm. Dexter coming yep. up, obviously with the vicinity, and that's always a rivalry <laughs> game, so to speak. But it's also a big heel point game. Mm. Kind of talk about your thoughts and mindset. I know you've been focused on today and getting through this one, but the thoughts and mindset heading into that game, which I'm sure is going to be tough and competitive. We got to play better than we did tonight. If we don't play better than we did tonight, Dexter is going to take it to us. Very simple. Uh, they're well coached. They are well drilled. Uh, Will Kuzniers is one of the best players in the state, let alone Class C and in our vicinity, right? Um, and they have some good role players around him. I tend to think that it's going to be a big crowd. I tend to think our guys are going to come with a little bit more energy on uh, on Thursday night. And I'm looking forward to a really, really good high school basketball game. If you like high school basketball, yeah, I know over on the bench and, you know, the blood pressure goes up and, you know, you scream and you lose hair and you lose sleep at night. But if you're a fan, come watch that game on Thursday night. I think it's going to be a good one. Having played in some of those games, they are so fun yep. so definitely stay tuned for that coach toby nelson want to thank you for joining us on the broadcast and great effort out of your group tonight thank you very much guys appreciate it with that we're going to end the broadcast here thank you for joining us and watching eastern Maine sports media and tonight's action